I want you to hit me as hard as you can. Hey everybody, this is Jason Dean with the Joe Blow Movie Network. Even the best directors have to start somewhere, so this week we are going to spotlight the top 10 surprising filmmakers' first films. Here we go! Number 10 is Shopping for Fangs, the very first film directed by Justin Lin. Lin is of course known for mega hits like most of the Fast and Furious franchise and the most recent Star Trek Beyond movie. However, way back in 1997, he wrote, directed, and edited his first film for a budget of just around $100,000. Shopping for Fangs is a rough mess of a film with a nearly non-existent plot about a man who believes he is turning into a werewolf and a housewife who is being seduced by a lesbian. But the directing talent still shines through and definitely telegraphed that there was more to come from Lynn. M. Night Shyamalan became an instant household name with the monster hit The Sixth Sense and has continued to be a successful if not polarizing director still working hard today. He made his first foray into filmmaking in 1992 with a self-produced drama that he directed, wrote, and even starred in. Praying with Anger is a cultural movie about an American Indian living in his native country of India for a student exchange program where he endures the hatred of those who are intolerant of his westernized upbringing. Not a great movie, but certainly worth a watch for the cultural significance. The Wachowskis as individuals are as interesting in real life as the characters they create in their movies. Before The Matrix put these two directors on the map, they made another movie only a couple of years prior called Bound in 1996. It's a neo-noir crime thriller about a pair of lesbian lovers who hatch a plan to steal two million dollars from the Mafia. The movie was praised for its direction and writing and went on to give the siblings the ability to create the groundbreaking Matrix franchise, which led to even further groundbreaking films afterwards words. Number 7 is hard to call a movie and really should be called a school project if anything. But then again, it's also a showcase for the rawest form of comedy that lives in the mind of Edgar Wright. A Fistful of Fingers was never officially released as a feature film, but can be found here and there because of, you know, the internet. The project is Wright's homage to spaghetti westerns, but done in a style more closely suited to Monty Python and the Holy Grail. With virtually no budget, all of the actors use their fingers to represent guns and skip around the land wearing pantomimed horse costumes. That helps explain Wright's humor in his feature films later. Number six is Paul Thomas Anderson and his first film known as Hard Eight from 1996. Unlike the others we have covered so far, I consider Hard Eight a regular full feature film with at least a measurable budget, well-known actors, and a theatrical release. The film stars the likes of Philip Baker Hall, John C. Riley, Gwyneth Paltrow, Samuel L. Jackson, Philip Seymour Hoffman, among other lesser known actors. The movie looks and feels like a Hollywood production, which truly showcased the raw writing and directing skills of Anderson. He would then go on to direct Boogie Nights, There Will Be Blood, and a host of other successful features after this. Peter Jackson may have been the kind of director to slide into obscurity had it not been for his involvement in the Lord of the Rings and Hobbit franchises. But in stark comparison to those huge budgets, star-studded casts, and international fame, he did have to start at the bottom just like the rest of us. Jackson's first feature film, Bad Taste from 1987, is described as a science fiction horror comedy splatter film and was made over the course of four years for a nearly non-existent budget. The story is ludicrous but fun and has a reasonable plot and cool characters. It's worth a watch if you can find it if for no other reason other than to know where Jackson came from. Number four is the first movie by a name you might recognize. How about Francis Ford Coppola, director of The Godfather, among many other Hollywood classics. Coppola was given leftover money by Roger Corman, who had just finished his own film. Corman tasked Coppola with making a psycho-style movie with the surplus funds, and Coppola quickly wrote a screenplay that ended up becoming Dementia 13. The 1963 horror thriller film was well received for that type of movie, and went on to open many doors for Coppola in the movie industry. It's an interesting product of its time and certainly worth watching. 
Number three is the polarizing director Paul Feig. In case you've been living under a rock, he is known for Bridesmaids, Spy, and the infamous recent remake of Ghostbusters. But before directing all of those comedies, Feig had been steadily working for quite a while as a writer and actor in television before breaking out with the directorial responsibilities of I Am David in 2003. The movie told the post-World War II story of a young boy escaping a labor camp in Bulgaria to reunite with his mother in Denmark. It's an inspiring drama adapted from a novel of the same name, but was not really well received by critics. However, it didn't stop Feig from becoming a favored director in Hollywood. Number two is a favorite of mine because it's a movie I saw at an extremely young age and have very fond memories of. Dark Star is a cult classic sci-fi movie made in 1974 by the one and only John Carpenter, along with writing help from Dan O'Bannon. The movie is mostly known for an alien who literally resembles a beach ball with claws who preys on crew members of a spaceship. If that plot sounds a tad bit familiar, it's because the writer, Dan O'Bannon, went on to write the screenplay for the 1979 classic Alien that had the exact plot, but now included a real budget. Carpenter, however, made Dark Star to be a horror comedy because of the lack of any real budget at the time. The movie is fun and still holds up today as a silly sci-fi comedy. Check it out if you haven't. And our number one goes to Piranha 2 The Spawning by the game-changing director James Cameron, making his directorial debut back in 1981. Three years before he made The Terminator, Cameron was promoted from the special effects supervisor on the Piranha sequel to actual director of the film. Unfortunately, there was a lot of drama and friction between the producers and Cameron, which ended up negatively affecting the final product. In spite of that, it is doubtful that the movie was ever going to be good to begin with, and many poke fun at Cameron's earliest effort. Regardless, Regardless, Cameron has repeatedly gone on record to say it's the best flying fish movie ever made. So there's our top 10 surprising filmmakers first films. Tell us down below which ones you've seen and what you thought. I'm Jason Dean for the Joe Blow Movie Network and thanks for watching. Go, go, go.